What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and we finally have the official data download for the new 8.5 anniversary part 2 with Rora no Rizuro and also Rare Recruits Law and Killer. Now one question that we were asking is, is this character going to be restricted to treasure map banners or is this character going to be similar to Kdad and the waifus being restricted to anniversary banners? So the way that we're looking at it right now, it unfortunately Unfortunately, looks like Zoro is going to be restricted to anniversary banners just due to the fact that the waifus are here. Also, we can have a look at the Sugo Fest right here. The structure is the exact same as the KDAD Sugo Fest. So, as unfortunate as it is, it looks like Zoro is going to be a restricted unit, which again doesn't really make a lot of sense in my eyes due to the fact that Zoro doesn't have Final Tap or Super Tandem, which I believe he kind of deserves to have if he's going to be restricted in this manner. So, looks, it looks like that this character is not going to be pullable outside of this banner for a long time. So, I know a lot of people are going to be upset about that. I personally am also kind of pissed that they are doing that. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But, one redeeming quality is the fact that we get a free multi on this banner, which is fantastic. Very similar to the KDAD Sugo Fest. So, some people out there are going to be very, very lucky and be able to pull the character for free on the free multi. Looks like waifus are also available on the free multi pull. KDAD will not be pullable on this Sugo Fest due to the fact that the KDAD Sugo Fest is still ongoing. But, just one thing that we really needed to talk about, like, is obviously just the Sugo Fest itself. As we said, the structure is essentially the exact same as the KDAD Sugo Fest. So we've got the 85% chance for a legend returning, of course. And due to the fact that the structure is essentially the same as the KDAD Sugo Fest, we can assume that the rates for each of the characters is also going to be similar. So what we can expect moving forward here is that part one is going to have probably 30 legends available and that Zoro is going to have the highest rate to be pulled on part one. I believe KDAD had the same rate as pulling them on part one, part two, and part three. So if you're looking to just get Zoro, it doesn't really matter which part of the Sugo Fest you're pulling on. Uh, but one thing I wanted to check actually, uh, one thing that is a bit different is that none of the parts on part two and three, none of the steps have guaranteed rare recruit steps because of the fact that KDAD debuted with four rare recruits. They actually made it a little bit easier to pull those types of units by making them guaranteed. Unfortunately, that is not the case here. But look, if you're looking to get your hands on the waifus once again, then pulling on part one is going to be your best bet to get them because they're probably only going to be available on part one. However, a redeeming quality of the Sugo Fest once again is that treasure map legends are also going to be pullable here on the banner artwork for part two you see hina and carrot and wanda are pullable and then on part three you've got Izo and okiku and super tandem blackbeard so i like the fact that those characters are also going to be available here i don't think it's that much of a stretch to assume that treasure map rare recruits may also return you know the the restricted ones that didn't get a chance to rerun i hope that is the case i'm still looking for heel goro treasure map rare recruit i also would love to get my hands on uh, the Van Orga treasure map rare recruit that attaches to Blackbeard with that really powerful support. So if any of those two come back, I'm going to be pretty excited about that, but we'll have to wait until 24 hours from now when the official banner is in game itself so we can see which characters are actually boosted. Now, before we kind of just wrap up this video, because there isn't really a lot to talk about because we already know what the Zora does. I made a video about him yesterday, but one thing I do have to point out is that he may have the best sprite in the entire game. I think this is probably the best in the game. It looks phenomenal. They did a really good job aesthetically building the character. Unfortunately, I feel like they kind of missed the mark in terms of the unit design. The spe like the Captain Special, Super Type, like the Super Class, should I say, it's all pretty good. But the thing that kind of pisses me off about it is there isn't a lot of abilities in his kit that are unique to him himself. Obviously, the tap timing chain effect, while it is good, it's not like a super requirement to have or anything like that. And there are still characters out there that still have this effect. I would have liked it if this character had a unique ability that potentially this character could only have. I guess you could say the captain ability effect to increase chain multiplier is a unique effect that this character only has. But I don't think it really warrants him to be restricted to an anniversary style banner. Um, I'm not really a big fan of that at all. One thing we can do though is we can have a look at his potential abilities which we didn't have a chance to look at. He only removes slot by 10 
you know, again, if this character is going to be that restricted and he doesn't have these, like, uh, Final Tap or Super Tanner potential abilities, I was expecting these to be pretty good potential abilities. It is a bit upsetting he doesn't completely remove it. He has Pinch Healing, which is, um, you know, two times if you're below 50%, which is pretty typical. And it's not even a guaranteed crit either. 80% chance for 8% bonus damage. Again, I feel like they probably missed the mark here. Let's have a look at the crewmate abilities. Uh, boosts Slasher and Free Spirit attack by 125 and makes character immune to stun. That is a bizarre choice. I, I never would have assumed that this character would have had immune to stun. I wonder if that means there's going to be more stun content moving forward. We'll have to wait and see. And the support effect, yeah, which we already did have a look at. And obviously, this character does have Grand Party stats, which we also talked about in the video yesterday. But, uh, one thing that we weren't able to see is the abilities of the new rare recruits. So we have Killer and we have Trafalgar Law. Now, I want to talk about Law first because there's something interesting about Killer that really needs to be brought to our attention. So, Trafalgar Law is a Dex Slasher Cerebral Captain ability, minus one cooldown, three times attack to Dex and 1.2 health. Nothing amazing there. His special, reducing paralysis and despair by five turns, changing adjacent slots into matching, two times color affinity to, to Slasher and Cerebral. And if three or more characters have a Dex, Tandem, or a Wano slot, you get a 1.0 chain multiplier boost for one turn. Uh, pretty interesting special. The utility is pretty good, and you get color affinity, and then there's additional bonuses if you have slots before you launch the special. He doesn't have double special activation, which would have worked perfectly for this guy. I think they probably could have done that, and then given the despair and paralysis removal three turns, uh, you know, obviously with double special activation in mind, probably would have been pretty fine. Um, but the fact that he doesn't have that means that you have to rely on getting slots before you use his special. So I don't know how useful that's going to be. As for his crewmate ability, tandem slots matching probably doesn't really matter that much because, you know, you've got the whale shark ship, you've got plenty of ways to make tandem beneficial. And tapping on this character with a dex, tandem, or wano slot further increases your color affinity by 0.25, making his special ability a 2.25 times color affinity boost instead. Or if you have a better color affinity booster, you can use that prior to lore special and still buff that color affinity, which I think is actually pretty cool. So there's really cool applications for this ability. He actually has a support ability too, attaching to Beppo, Kid, Sachi, and Penguin, which is nice because all of these characters really needed better supports. Once per quest, if you're inflicted with Paralysis or Despair, you remove it by one turn. So one turn removal, it, it, it's fine, it definitely could be better. One thing to note here as well is that level 4 actually removes Despair only. So you may potentially want two copies of Lore, one for level 4 and one for level 5 support, just in case if you do need just the Despair removal instead of, you know, potentially removing the Paralysis earlier on. So it is dependent on that. Um, so, you know, Law doesn't have any Rumble stats either. It is what it is. You know, Trafalgar Law, he seems like a pretty decent rare recruit. Now, the interesting one here is, is Killer, because we had some information about something else that was also occurring with the release of uh, this data download and knowing about the next 6+. plus. So after reading this character's abilities, I wonder if you guys can predict who the next 6+, plus is going to be. So Killer is a Dex-driven slasher. And he gives those characters 3.5 attack with 1.3 health, but zero recovery for the crew. The special ability reduces defense up by 6, reduces minus 1 cooldown to the crew, boosts driven and slasher characters orbs by 2.25. If the captain is driven or slasher, you lock your slots for one turn. And if your captain's slot is a bomb or a super bomb slot, when the special is launched, reduces resilience by 6 turns. So that is very interesting, the fact that this character is focusing on Bomb and Super Bomb. Now, which character that relates to Killer has something to do with Bomb and Super Bomb slots? Yeah, that's right. It's obviously going to be Super Type Kid. So we'll talk about him in just a moment. But just finishing off Killer, Crewmate Ability, minus two Special Reverse. And if you tap on him with a Bomb or a Super Bomb slot, you get minus 10% Slasher and Driven Resistance for one turn so a pretty nice little additional bonus there his support attaching to kid heat and wire if once per quest if the enemy changes your slots you give the supported character a bomb slot and you boost the color affinity for the supported character only by 1.5 for one turn not a very useful effect i guess specifically if you're using dex kid for something you may want to use this support 
but realistically, I don't think it's a very powerful uh, support effect. I don't think it's going to see too much play. But yeah, obviously, the big thing there is with Dex Kid, uh, and then we can actually go ahead over to the character list real quick, and if we sort by boosted characters, we can see uh, the character right in the middle of the screen, Dex Kid, is actually boosted for this event, which, as we know with the past few months, this is going to be the free-to-play character that we get with the next Rumble season, which is going to be the next Super Evolution character moving forward. So that's really exciting to see because this character definitely needs some love and support. Even on this character's release, he really wasn't that good. Um, so he really needs a little bit of support. And the fact that this character is built in such a weird and wacky way, you know, four times attack to Dex, 3.75 to all other characters. Uh, Dex characters get five times if they've got a bomb, a super bomb slot. He makes tandem slots into bomb slots, increases the chances of tandem slots appearing, and then bomb and super bomb are matching, and bomb and super bomb do not do any damage to the crew. So obviously they can up a lot of them numbers for sure, uh, and then maybe add another additional effect here. I think one of the big things with Kid that we noticed straight away when we f when he first came out is the lack of defensive capabilities. He has no health boost, he has no damage reduction, and no healing capabilities. So they could either really lean into not being defensive at all and make him super offensively focused, or they could do the reverse and give us a little bit of bulk with Kid. Either one of those probably would work if they do it correctly. And then his super type effect is really cool actually. It does damage and then it changes all slots including block in, including block into bomb slots so that is very powerful for his special ability which removes strength dex bomb and super bomb slots on the crew and then does damage based on the amount of those slots that you removed so with using his super type to get the full board of bomb then use his special ability he does three million damage to all enemies so that's a really cool effect that he has and then he changes all of the emptied slots into super bomb slots and dex characters get a 2.5 attack boost remember that super bomb slots are very similar to like rainbow slots where they cannot be changed by the enemy or any of your specials but of course with his captain ability he treats them as beneficial so there's really cool ways that you can abuse this and especially with the new rare recruit killer that we just talked about he has an ability that can lock your slots so you can carry those super bomb slots over multiple different stages so i wonder if this kid's going to be kind of useful in the treasure map itself we'll have to wait and see but of course the fact that this character is receiving a uh, a, a super evolution from what we can tell is very exciting because he definitely deserves some type of buff remember that level limit break will also be applied to this character so i'm also super excited to see what they're going to do with that i wonder if they're going to lean into maybe a separate color maybe he boosts dex and something else maybe it's dex and and, uh, and and driven or dex striker driven that would be pretty sick we'll have to wait and see what they have in store for that but obviously this video is not really about kid but it is interesting that he looks to be the next super evolution this video is about zoro so i'm very much excited to uh, finally get my hands on this Zora. We're definitely going to be doing pulls. Hopefully we can pull this guy and uh, I definitely want to make some content with him because he seems pretty strong. But that's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.